Hey guys, this is Austin, and today I'm here with my 2014 gaming PC build guide. Ready to build yourself a computer? This guide is based on my most recent $500 gaming PC build, and you guys can check that out in the description where I go over all of the parts that I used in this build, but for the most part this tutorial applies to basically any gaming computer you want to build. Sure, you will find a few little differences here and there, but for the most part this will show you how to build basically any gaming computer you want. Before we get started, there are a couple things you need. First of all, find yourself a table to work on, away from carpet or rugs, anything that could help build up static. The only tool we need for the build is a Phillips screwdriver, although a pair of needle nose pliers can sometimes be helpful. Let's jump right in. Start by unscrewing the thumb screws on the back of the case so we can open up things to work on. Once you've got them free, the side panel should slide right off. Just set it aside for now. Flip the case around and undo the thumb screws on this side as well, then pop the panel off. Inside, you'll find a few accessories for the case, including cable ties, PCIe brackets, screws, and other hardware, along with the manual. I like to start builds with installing the power supply, so grab this first. You'll see a ton of cables, but we'll go over what to do with these a bit later. For now, slide the supply into the case, either on bottom or top depending on which case you're using, making sure the fan is free and clear and pointing downward. Included with the power supply should be four screws like this. Pick them out, and let's get this installed. A power supply has four screw holes on each corner, which should line up with the corresponding holes in your case. A good rule of thumb is to put the first screw in and then go across to the opposite side and screw that next to help make sure that nothing gets misaligned. Then put the other screws in, and once you're done, go back around once more to make sure everything is nice and tight. While we're here, let's remove the PCIe covers so we can install our graphics card a bit later. For this build, we're removing the top two, and usually these are unscrewed, however with this case you need to bend them backward until they snap off. Now set the case aside and grab your motherboard box. Now the board is a bit fragile, especially to static, so when taking it out of the bag, try to touch it only by the plastic bits and set it down on the box to work on. Before we start installing hardware into it, let's take a quick look around what the motherboard is all about. This gray bit in the center is your CPU socket, which is where we'll be installing the processor. Over to the right of it are these long black DIMM sockets, which is where your DDR3 RAM goes. Just past this is your 20 plus 4 pin motherboard power connector, which is where we plug in the power supply. Below this on the edge of the board are our 6 SATA ports. These are what you use to connect drives, and for this build we'll be using just a single hard drive, but you can also use these to hook up SSDs, optical drives, or more hard drives. Right behind all your ports, you should see the 4 pin CPU power connector. Pretty self-explanatory, but you'll plug a cable from your power supply into here. Toward the bottom of the card are your PCI Express connectors to drop in your graphics card. Generally, you'll want to use the highest full-sized slot, which in this case is the blue one. However, some things like sound and capture cards can also go into the smaller PCIe 1 connectors. Finally, around back are all of your ports. These will be sticking out the back of your case and are how you'll connect keyboards, mice, Ethernet, etc. Alright, time to get to the fun stuff starting with installing the CPU. Inside the box, you'll find the processor itself wrapped in plastic, along with the heatsink and fan with pre-applied thermal paste. When handling the CPU, only touch it by the edges and be very careful with the pins on the back. Bend any of these bad boys and you're in trouble. Come over to your motherboard and pull the retention arm back to open up the socket. On the bottom of the CPU, you'll see a small gold arrow on the corner. Line this up with the matching arrow on the board to make sure it's going in the right way. Gently rest the processor into the socket. Don't use any force as it should sit by itself. Now close the arm back down using a little pressure and that's it, the CPU is installed. Now grab your cooler and set it down over the processor, making sure the thermal paste makes a good solid seal. AMD CPUs are a little fiddly when it comes to locking the stock cooler down, but make sure the metal arms hook into the mounts on the motherboard and pull them down to tighten. Next, let's plug in the CPU fan. If it's a bit too long to reach the header on the motherboard, just tie it in on itself to get rid of some of the slack. You should see a 4-pin CPU fan header near the socket. Just plug the fan into here. There are two notches on it, so it only goes in one way. Now that that's out of the way, let's install the RAM. If you take a look at it, you'll see a notch about two-thirds of the way down. You want to align this with the matching notch on the motherboard. Pull the clips on either side back and slide the DIMM in and then press firmly on either side until it clicks into place. At this point, our motherboard is basically fully assembled with the CPU, heatsink, and fan along with memory. Next up, let's install everything into the case. Flip the case on its side and make sure the cables are set out of the way. The motherboard is mounted on brass standoffs and it's important to make sure it's secure on these, otherwise it could ground out on the steel case. 
This case has all the standoffs we need already installed, but if not, you'll need to take a look at the manual and install the standoffs you need for your motherboard. Grab the IO shield that came with your board and pop it into the back of the case, making sure you've got it flipped right side up. It's a pain to get in correctly, so don't be afraid to use a little force to pop it in. Now lower your motherboard into place over the standoffs and make sure it's flush with the IO shield and that the ports are sticking through. Grab your screws and start tightening the board down one by one. Again, making sure that all the holes line up with the standoffs, as well as all the ports are fully accessible on the back of the case. Now, flip the case back up, and while we've got easy access to them, let's plug in the fans. Grab the lead from the rear fan and connect it to the fan header on the board right above the PCIe slot. Come to the front and do the same thing with the front fan. Connect it to the 4-pin header just behind your RAM. Next up, let's install the graphics card, which is super easy. Just line it up with the main PCIe connector and slide it in until it clicks into place. Make sure that all of the ports are clearly accessible from the back of the case, and then screw it in to make sure it stays nice and secure. There you go, the graphics card is installed. The last major thing we need to install is the hard drive. Every case does this a little differently, but with the Line M, it's as simple as sliding it into a free drive cage, making sure that the screw holes line up. Once it's all set, screw the drive into place with four screws, two facing forward and two in the back. Now that our hardware is installed, time for the fun part. Wiring! Except this is not fun at all. Grab the bundle of wires from the front of the case and start with the big blue USB 3.0 connector. Plug this into the bottom of the motherboard. There's a notch on the connector and cable, so it only goes in one way, but be careful, the pins are a bit easy to bend. Next, grab the smaller USB 2.0 connector and plug this in here. There's a pin knocked out of it, so again, it only goes in one way. To connect the front panel audio, you should see two leads. AC97 and HD audio. Connect the HD audio connector into the bottom left of the board, although this can be in different places depending on the motherboard. There are several smaller front panel connectors now. For these, you'll need to check your motherboard manual to see what goes where. The important thing to note is that the colored wires are positive, so that shows you which way to plug everything in. Don't worry too much about getting something wrong here. If it's not right, just go back and double check. At this point, your cable should look something like this. We're almost there. Along with the hardware that came with your case, you should see a small speaker. This connects either with the front panel connectors, or on this build right beside them. Come over to your motherboard box and find your SATA cables. These are to connect your hard drive and have a clip and notch to make sure that they go in correctly. First, attach it to the back of the hard drive with the smaller data connector, and then run the other end into a SATA port on your motherboard. Now, we just need to hook the power supply up to everything. Start with grabbing the big 20 plus 4 pin connector. This goes in right behind the RAM, and like basically every other cable, only clips in one way. Now grab the 4 plus 4 pin CPU power cable. Depending on the supply, you may have to snap these apart, as for this build we only need 4 of the pins. Hook it up on the top left of the motherboard, and that's all for this one. Come back to your power supply leads and find a harness with these long, thinner connectors. These are for SATA and power your hard drive, optical drive, or SSD. Unlike the data cables, these don't click into place, so you'll have to use a little force to make sure it's inserted all the way. Last but not least, grab a PCIe lead. This is a 6-pin connector with an additional 2 on the side and are usually used for graphics cards. Just plug it into your GPU. Depending on your build, some cards don't need any extra power, but many need two 6 plus 2-pin connectors. Now it's time for a test to see if everything is working. Flip the power switch on the back of the power supply and hook it up to a monitor and keyboard, then hit the power button. All the lights and fans should power up, and you should see video on your screen. This is a good time to go inside your BIOS to check that everything is showing up properly. This MSI board has a helpful explorer option that lets you check your processor, power connections, memory, and all the rest of your hardware to make sure it's installed properly. If everything looks good, unplug the PC, and it's time to clean up some of our cables. Generally, you want to route what you can behind the motherboard and use electrical ties to tidy up the rest, but this case is tricky to get neat cable management with, so just tuck unused cables out of the way and clean it up the best you can. Once you're done, slide the side panels back on, and we are done with the hardware. At this point, you can install any operating system you want. So if you'd like to go the SteamOS route, I have created a tutorial, and in fact I used this build to do it, so if you guys want to go that way, I will have that linked in the description to check that out. However, more than likely, you're probably going to want to install Windows, so let's show you how to do that right now. Hop back into the BIOS, and make sure the boot order is set to either your USB drive or optical drive first, depending on how you plan on installing Windows. Hook up your installation media, and the setup should begin. It's pretty straightforward, just hit Next, then Install Now, and after a minute, it will ask for your product key. Punch that in, and it will ask what type of installation you want. 
Since this is a new PC, pick Custom, select your hard drive, and choose New. Hit Apply, and let Windows create your partitions, and then click Next. Now Windows will begin installing. This will take a while, so sit back and let it work its magic. After a couple restarts, it will have you personalize and create your account. Do this, and it will kick you into Windows. Finally, we're done! Except that now we have to install our drivers, so we're actually not done. If you can't connect to the internet out of the box, you'll have to use the driver C that came with your motherboard, or use another computer to download the Ethernet driver onto a USB drive, and then bring it over to your new PC. Once you're online, first thing is to get your graphics card driver. For NVIDIA, just search the name of your graphics card on their site, and download and install the driver. It's the same thing if you have AMD or Intel graphics, just download the latest drivers available from their site. Most things should be working now, but it's still a good idea to search the name of your motherboard and head to the driver section of the site to get the rest of what you need. Generally, I don't bother with the utilities, but things like chipset and audio drivers are very helpful. From here, feel free to install all the rest of the programs you need, such as Steam or Origin, another web browser, etc. Now, all that's left is to let Windows update. This will probably take a while and a few restarts, but once that's done, you're up and running. Congratulations on building yourself a gaming PC. So like I said earlier, I will have links to everything I talked about in the description of this video so you guys can check that out. And if you enjoyed this video, absolutely be sure to subscribe to the channel so you catch lots more videos like this going over all kinds of awesome gaming PC stuff. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching and I will catch you next time.